Next month, Oblivion will be turning 17 years old, and to celebrate that fact, I thought I'd go back to my YouTube roots and make an updated mod list for 2023 for those people who were tempted to go back and do another playthrough. And even if you're not tempted, I guarantee you will be by the end of this video. And the rare person watching this video who has discovered Oblivion for the first time, buckle in because you are about to play the best RPG of all time. We will be covering a number of different mods that were only released a few weeks ago, and then some older mods that have received some interesting updates very recently. With all of these installed, you will dramatically change and refresh the game for a new playthrough. And be sure to stay around until the end of the video, because the last section of the video we're going to talk about the essential steps that you need to go through before you can even start thinking about modding Oblivion. Let's talk about our first mod that fixes one of the most irritating things in the game, which is Sigil Stones. The trick people normally use is to reload the game over and over just after you have activated a Sigil Stone so that you can get the enchantment that you want. But this mod, Sigil Stone Selector, allows you to just pick whatever type of Sigil Stone you want when you activate it. So you no longer have to get frustrated fishing for the best enchant that you want. This is just a small mod, but I bet you'll never play Oblivion without it ever again. When inside Oblivion Gates, did you ever think that the Dramora enemies are a little repetitive? Specifically, the Dramora humanoids. Even when you get higher level and you take on different Dramora humanoids, they just all look the same, and the armor and the weapons also look the same. With this great mod, Dramora Dehomogenized, it creates much more Drumora diversity. Firstly, Drumora enemies will have a larger variety of different Daedric armors, which you can actually equip yourself also. And instead of bound armor spells just summoning Daedric armor again, they have been replaced with the Mythic Dawn armor set pieces, which was originally not in the game. But I think this is a perfectly law friendly way of making the Daedric armor and bound spells much more interesting. By the way guys, did you know that only 5% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel? I've got plenty more videos like this coming very soon guys, and I will be making more videos for Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6 if they ever actually do release. The Merchant House skill in Oblivion was a little boring, but luckily this mod Tricks of a Trade revamps the skill and makes it much more interesting. Firstly, the higher your Merchant House skill is, the higher chance you get to find extra gold and gems when looting in dungeons. And there's also some extra perks that you can take advantage of. So first of all, at Prentice, you get the cost of spells reduced by 35%, Journeyman, 35% off repair costs, Expert, 35% off recharging, and then at Master, 50% off all of these services. I don't know about you guys, but that just feels like it should have been in the game anyway. Also, the Merchant House skill will increase your disposition with merchants by 20% of your Merchantile skill. Now we have another skill revamp mod called Mysticism and Soul Gem Tweaks. This is another great mod by Push the Win Button. We recently featured many of his mods on another mod list that focuses on making Oblivion the perfect game by fixing game issues, overpowered systems, and getting rid of a load of boring stuff. I would also recommend checking that video out also because mods on that list are pretty mandatory in my opinion. It'll be linked in the description and you'll also see a card on screen right now. But anyway, back to the mod. Firstly, mysticism increases the amount of weapon charge you get from soul gems up to an extra 50% based on your current skill. Soul gems will also actually stack together. For instance, if you have four common soul gems, they will be turned into one big soul gem with more recharge value. So you don't have to keep using individual soul gems every time you want to recharge your weapon. And those are all of the basal features of the mod, but there's some extras that you can get if you choose to get them. So first of all, Aelid Wells will fully recharge your weapons. Azora Star is also rebalanced, that gives you a permanent buff of 40 mysticism points instead of giving you an infinite soul gem. And the best feature of all time is rebalancing the unlocking of enchanting. Normally you would have to join the Mage Guild by doing all the recommendations in every single major city, which takes ages, or do the Frostcrag Spire DLC. But this mod adds scrolls of enchanting to merchants. Basically, you buy a scroll, and when you use the scroll, like casting a spell, 
you will open the enchanting menu, but you will need to join a mage's guild to make your own spells. The mod list I mentioned earlier also has a mod in there called Rebalance Spellmaking, so and enchanting also, so you can't do stupid overpowered stuff like stack Ch Chalmian, Chalmian, sorry, to 100% and become totally invincible. Now, if you want to freshen up the loot tables and add loads of new weapons, armor, and staves, you want to get the Armentarium Complete mod. This adds many new weapons and armor models, but also different color variations and also many new named artifacts. In total, there are 636 new armors, 946 new weapons, 200 defensive weapons, which are basically weapons that you can use to block, so you can basically dual wield, but they really just act like a shield, and 53 new magic arrow types. Just take a look at these pictures of everything that's been added. There's now katana varieties of every different weapon type and much, much more. This is effectively Oblivion's version of the immersive weapons and armor mod for Skyrim. Continuing with our topic of refreshing again, we also want to refresh in the world itself. The best way is to get these four mods, so this is like four in one. So better cities, better forts, expanded villages, and unique landscapes. These mods combined will revamp the vanilla world of Cyrodiil. The Imperial City districts will have their own unique look. The castles, personally, I think they just look absolutely unreal. The cities have a lot of extra buildings, interiors, and little details like stairways. They feel much more like an actual medieval village. The villages and settlements will have extra buildings and detail to feel even more realistic. The forts in the world look more like actual castles, and the unique landscape mod will add more realism and uniqueness to the forests, rivers, and mountains. Oblivion's world was pretty big, but also pretty bland and repetitive and that mod will fix that. Quick mod now that makes the waiting feature better. This mod is called Quick Time Waiting. It allows you to wait longer than 24 hours and it's much faster. But make sure when you're waiting longer than 24 hours that you actually do it in an interior location because you can actually accidentally crash the game. Not many people know this about Oblivion, but you can actually summon a black bear. This was released with the Small Spell Tome DLC but it was an extremely low drop chance and totally random at the end of a dungeon. But this mod adds more nature summons by default into the game that you can just buy from merchants. Like for instance the Ogre, Spriggan, Wolf, Rat and Will of the Wisp. So Conjuration isn't just about summoning Daedric enemies. This is a standalone mod that goes actually with parts with the Balance Magic mod, which I would also recommend, I mentioned it on my other mod list. What it does is it totally rebalances magic massively and puts these nature spells actually in the mysticism tree instead. Which is interesting because you can have a mage build capable of summoning enemies without actually having to get conjuration. The mod also fixes a lot of the scaling issues with spells like how you would need to cast a certain level of a certain spell for its effect to work. A second to last mod is a small mod that adds bounty boards to the game. You go to certain inns and you can pick up these simple quests for an immersive way to make gold as a bounty hunter. They will send you a small quest to kill a named bandit or exterminate an entire alien ruin of certain monsters. That's an example anyway. There's also some quests that tell you to retrieve lost items. And the enemies and gold reward will scale to your level. And lastly, we have the cheeky player house mod. No mod list will be complete without one. The best thing I like about this mod is how it is immersively implemented into the game rather than it just being given to you. This house is a reward for completing the Battle of Kavach questline. It is a lighthouse located in the Topol Bay. First of all, the house is absolutely stunning as you can see. The house has lots of storage and display cases. There's also a pirate ship with a personal fence to sell stolen goods. And outside, there's an alchemy garden and a basin of renewal to heal your diseases. There you go, those are the 10 main mods, although I think it's technically 14, but this always happens with my mod list. I always add in some extra cheeky mods to sort you guys out. What we're going to do now is just talk about some of the boring essential mods for people who are new to modding, and you will need these in order to get these mods to work, and they're just mandatory mods that everyone has to get before you start modding. So first of all, you need OBSE, which is the script extender. I will link a tutorial on how to sort that out. You're also going to need the Windows 10 scroll fix if you have more than one monitor because what that does is it prevents 
other windows from scrolling up and down on a different monitor when you're scrolling through the Oblivion menu. It's very, very irritating if you're trying to watch Twitch or something. I'd also recommend getting the unofficial patches for the Oblivion base game, Shivering Isles, Knights of a Nine, just everything. Get all of the unofficial patches. And if you want your game to look a bit better, you may want to get Oblivion Reloaded, which is now on the Nexus, and you combine that with a texture mod. There's an AI upscale texture mod, which is quite interesting, but unfortunately right now it isn't available, so keep an eye out for that one. But meanwhile, you can get the 2020 retexture project instead. And obviously on the Nexus there's also EMB mods, which you can use to ramp up the graphics. And if you want to get a totally mental revamp of the game with one simple installer, you can look into the Wabberjack application. I've also made a video on how to install this on my channel, which you can check out also. It's pretty simple and straightforward. However, adding mods to that, like once you've used the Wabberjack, you're probably going to cause it to crash, to be perfectly honest. Modding is a very complicated process where you have to be very careful not to crash the game. This is why we use applications like the Mod Organizer, which I'll link in the description also, which I do recommend to get. But anyway guys, I definitely covered everything there. My name is The Night Goblin, and to my next video, ciao.